Day 5 of flash flooding for Arizona, New Mexico, and eastern Colorado, but also for the entire coastline of California for October 13, 2025. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Pew, and I promise for people in Arizona, this is probably the last video about you guys for a while. We're going to see most of the flash flood risk be from central Arizona to the border of Arizona, New Mexico, but also from southwest Colorado. And this morning, as I'm recording this video, there's probably some showers that are already happening in places like Arizona and New Mexico. But things are going to start intensifying around 12 to 1 p.m. mountain time, and this is going to travel northeast Word. So for Arizona, you can expect rain from like 12 to 1 p.m. and then end around like midnight. But places like Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico can pretty much see the same time frame, but some of these storms may linger overnight. Now for California, we're going to see these showers and storms gradually slowly travel southward throughout the state. So for example, this morning, we're already seeing some showers and thunderstorms happening in the north part of the state. And so around the Bay Area, we can see something around 12 p.m. Pacific time. A little bit more south of that, Central California, we may be seeing around 2 to 4 p.m. Central time. A little bit more south of that around Malibu we can see something around 6 p.m pacific time and then LA area maybe around 10 p.m pacific time and a lot of these showers and thunderstorms are pretty much going to linger on throughout the night as well especially from central to southern California and the storm prediction center did issue a marginal risk or one out of five for severe weather for some parts of the California coast but also from New Mexico and Arizona where there's an isolated risk for winds up to 60 miles per hour so why this is all happening if we look at 500 millibars or midway to troposphere we've had this cyclone that formed in the pacific northwest and has been slowly traveling traveling southward. And with that, it's been creating this really massive and broad, strong trough. And so accompanying that, we have a lot of strong winds aloft and bringing in a lot of good shear. And in addition to that, we have a lot of vorticity. So both with the shear of tilting the updrafts and also with the vorticity and spinning those updrafts, we're going to have a lot of upward motion. And accompanying this cyclone, we do have a little bit of mid-level moisture traveling southward as well. But with this trough deepening, again, we're still having those continued southwesterly winds in places like Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, which is still bringing remnants of Tropical Storm Raymond from yesterday. But if we go down to the surface, we do have a surface low pressure around Northern California, bringing a really broad range of counterclockwise flow. And so for the California coastline, as it travels southward, it is bringing some westerly winds and evacuating some moisture onto the coastline. And as for places like Arizona, New Mexico, from the Gulf of California, it's evacuating a lot of moisture from there as well. And a lot of these areas have some kind of mountain range as well. So we're going to have a lot of orographic lift or winds going upwards with a mountain, which is helping with that upward motion. Now, if we go back a 500 millibars, but at the East Coast, we still have this ridge, but it's slowly traveling eastward. And with that, we still have some somewhat southwesterly flow going to the Atlantic. And so if we go down to the surface, we have that surface low pressure around the mid-Atlantic area, and it's slowly weakening. And so for places like the mid-Atlantic states to the northeast, we can still expect isolated to scattered light to moderate rain. But the biggest thing still is we have a lot of offshore high winds, up to 40 miles per hour going directly onto the shore. 